All right, we're coming in live for the first featured podcast on the Ohio Wild channel. We are sitting at Rabbit Camp Saturday night, just feasted, big time feasted. We got four and a half pounds of rabbit from four rabbits that we shot today. Uh, it's twelve fifteen right now. We're just starting a little podcast. We That's haven't Sunday. talked about. We've, we've tried not. You just lied to about. the listeners. Jack's right. It's Sunday, man. It is not Saturday it's Sunday. anymore. <laughs> Sunday morning, together. rabbit camp. We have avoided talking about today's experiences for the Try sake to. of saving it for the podcast, as, we, as we've been saying all day. So we have Luke and Jack here. They uh, have never really been in a hunting scenario before. So we figured coming rabbit oh, hunting at the on the Maple Ridge Farm was a pretty good opportunity for them to come for the first time. So I don't know. I'd like it to be pretty free form. I feel like we have a lot of questions on the table that we've been holding out on each other for so oh, yeah fire them away <laughs> fire them away i feel like we just kind of start with you uh you had your hunter safety course and you recently just got your license oh, yeah, and you're just, you were coming baby. prepared yeah the the course wasn't too bad it the website didn't work well that was kind of a bummer but for the most part government site yeah exactly you just click next and it would never reload the page but it, it was fine i actually i have to admit i was really bummed that i had to sit there for sp- you know, hours and click and read. Yeah. But then I started reading and I I was actually learning. And majority of the things y'all were, well, like the jargon y'all will use, I actually knew what was going on. So it did help a lot. Uh, and then getting the license was like, you just pay your money and move on. Mm-hmm. That's pretty simple. But yeah, the whole experience of actually learning, uh, I knew most of the time I would just learn from y'all. But yeah. What was your, uh, I guess what was your just fun. like, previous exposure to hunting or like growing up well my dad my dad grew up in a rural area but i grew up in an urban area and then mike helped me you know take my first shot and that was that yeah that was that was a cool that was a cool time actually what was that last summer uh two summers ago. two summers ago 2019 2020 oh that was that was 2020 okay so yeah we were down at jerry's place in in crooksville Mm -hmm. and uh we had a we had an interesting weekend we did a whole bunch of strip mine pond fishing at a kayaks and like a little 10 foot plastic pond hopper john boat with a with an electric trolling motor it was a good time but Word got out that Luke had never shot a firearm yeah, before. That, that was the same weekend I sh- caught my first fish, too. Yeah, <laughs> that was put a, him on a bunch Lots of firsts. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, so, so uh, loaded up the over-under and mm-hmm. hung, a, hung a pizza box on a tree and let him fire away. Which yeah. gun was that? Was that, that your over-under? Yeah, that was my over-under. Yeah. So Luke shot a rabbit today, just one shot, just smoked it. And that was his third shot that he's ever taken with a firearm in his life, I think, to point that Turkey out. Turkey choke so. in a 20-gauge on like a pretty quickly moving rabbit in the woods and just rolled the thing. Third time shooting a gun. Yeah, you know, okay, that was something I wrote down Mm -hmm. was I noticed compared to when I shot his his gun, the 20 gauge, it felt like nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honestly, it felt like nothing. I think it's part of it way. too is like when you're hunting. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I was yeah that's it's, true. It's like it's a weird. The thing. build up was not high at all. I just squeezed the trigger and looked to see what happened. Yeah, and then it's just like oh, there's no Excuse reaction. It's just kind there's of there's an adrenaline happens. factor yeah. for sure. I mean, you're fired up. Yeah, you're tra- it happens I fast got, with rabbit hunting too. Because scurrying by, as there's fast nothing as happening, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> like you got to react, and you have three seconds or. Things out of range or you know on your in toes. a direction you can't shoot. Mm-hmm. Fast moving. I feel like that's kind of one of the things I was thinking is like, as your first time in like any hunting scenario, I feel like rabbit hunting is a pretty like cool one just because it's like fast pace and you're you always have a visual with people and it's kind of just like it's a big group thing to where you're not just like thrown into something by yourself and, and it's just like an active kind of not knowing what you might be doing yeah. wrong or doing right <laughs> you just don't know if True you're just by yourself and yeah i was wandering through the woods looking left and right to see what y'all were doing 95 <laughs> percent of the time hey dude 95 percent of the time we don't even know <laughs> <laughs> just gonna be honest with you <laughs> we were looking a, to you at a certain that's the number yeah. one thing you gotta learn a, about hunting Luke, with what us did you, learn, you <laughs> gotta learn to stay loose yeah, I mean, it, it does make sense as long as you're... That that was another thing I wrote down was safety. 
I felt very comfortable once I figured out, you know, the whole concept of the line and how to hold my gun and how to move my safety correctly. It, it honestly felt very safe if you're very present and patient. Patient. So that I think was that's the most important thing for those interested or who have not had prior experience to firearms or hunting is the comfort the comfort with the safeness of a otherwise destructive tool. <laughs> that is something I think mm. a lot of people do not get early on and s- are biased due to their exposures via media or whatever avenue brings that content. I think that's something that is very underrated in the eyes of children. For sure. Is providing common sense firearms handling and how to treat that as a legitimate tool and not just a object in the media that is portrayed mm-hmm. primarily in a negative manner. You're hitting and, it on the head here because yeah. a lot of people need to be reminded that the Cars internet... Are more lethal? <laughs> no, they, they need to be reminded that the internet and Hollywood are not real life. So, right? this is, so you're not going to learn these things from the media or, or from movies or whatever. You're going to learn these by sitting down with people who lived their life doing these things. I shot my first shotgun when I was eight. Something like that. It was a 20 gauge. It was the same one. It was the same model of gun that Luke shot his with. It was a Mossberg mm-hmm. 520 gauge. Similar to me as so, well. So, you know, I, I've i been in this for now two decades, the, the outdoors and handling firearms and, and being around people in the woods. Never had an incident. Never had a scare because, one, I surround myself with people that I trust when I'm hunting, right? And so... Like Jack said, as a new hunter, the comfort aspect is huge. If you're around people that you're like, ah, I don't know, they're a little bit of a wild one. <laughs> if you're uncomfortable, maybe just step away. Oh, I right? agree. Find the right crew. They'll take so, you under their wing. So Jack was the other one saying that he also, you've never really been hunting of any sorts? or I've had exposure through Boy Scouts, okay. grandparents, adjacent, just be growing up in a exposure, yeah, rural but area. It was never a main means of acquiring mm-hmm. food or anything that I had particularly taken practice or activity in. But I was well aware of it, the efficacy of it for and against as well. I had firearms training growing up as well. Um, relatively biased or unbiased, I believe, mm-hmm. towards it either way. So what was your overall experience then on just like a quick three-hour rabbit hunt on the Robinson farm? That was In three terms hours. of gathering food, I don't think it's very effective. I think if you're doing this strictly from the perf- perspective of acquiring food, I think larger game is a far better way to go. It took a lot of mm-hmm. people just to gather four and a half pounds of yeah. meat to so, cook a stew yeah, to feed several years. of us. It's and, you're, and you are killing four animals in doing that. I mean, it's definitely a, one way of looking at it also brings up a totally different route that dad had brought up about like if we would have got on there out there with a dog which a lot of people use dogs for rabbits and i think if we would have done that we might have just wiped out the entire farm in one day <laughs> i mean it's like valid i mean if we could shoot all right a dog right. <laughs> right. dog's a fun experience but the activity the activity is slower with a dog but it it it's neat to watch a dog work you know oh, yeah. and and mm-hmm. just just see how they bring them back and 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 it all comes together that way and you you, you know we might have gone out and got four rabbits the same way but but you're not you don't have that rush of them yeah. blowing it's by a totally people different sport. how's yeah, that like how's that work i would be nervous that the dog would keep chasing the rabbit and then the dog, the dog yeah, would they enter do. the, the they dog they do. doesn't the dog doesn't stay close enough to to alarm the rabbit if they do the rabbit will run for cover and they'll hit a hole and they're done yeah. they just they they're on their scent trail and 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 the rabbit feels comfortable and just stays ahead of them. They casually make their way back and then they they kind of come back in and you just you you kind of post up and set or stand and and not move much and they'll just come hopping back into the area. Okay, so and rabbits have a, a crazy tendency to run a loop. They'll 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 basically lead you into thinking they're running off. But they're circling right back to where they were, and they're heading and back to their you'll den. You'll find basically. them in the same spot that that you initially kicked them from. Okay. So I, I believe Brian was was saying something earlier today about however many years ago he was hunting on somebody's dog, and the dog got out of earshot on a rabbit, 
and worked the rabbit all the way back to them. Yeah, they'll they'll go they'll go a quarter mile yeah, or more way out there out really and bring it's it wild. back around. As long as that rabbit's not feeling threatened, they they hear it and it's a nuisance and that's it. And they just kind of work their way back, hmm. and they just come back casually back into the area. And it's, the one thing that's some people like hunting them that way because you don't shoot you can get rabbits that way without shooting them up as much. You know, okay, they come you back more controlled. Shot. Some people will shoot them with twenty yeah, twos, but even mm. without that, you can still get more of a headshot on them. Mm. Rather, you know, a lot of times we were shooting when they're mo- running away, and it's hard to not hit the hind end, and that's right. where all the good meat is. Yeah, and if they're coming back in and hopping back, you can kind of get that lead shot on them and and not tear them up as much. I'd say primarily is my previous experience or exposure to rabbit hunting particularly was with air pellet rifles with okay. carefully placed shots towards the rear of the head um, to kind of mitigate that. And, you know, that comes up when you're new to hunting if you don't understand what's going on the process. I had never saw an animal skinned or cooked before that had been essentially killed on a hunt. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that, making sure that your food is free of fragmented bones and shot as well. There's yeah. more to it than just actually it. getting the animal and yeah. you know, placing a well-placed shot on it to get your food. There's a lot more that goes into it. And so if you're new, you also have to consider that. Do I have the space and time to effectively skin this animal, take care of the food and the preparation to actually make it Yeah, effective? it took us all day. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Al, you said it best. You, I got the full experience today. Yeah. From start to finish, bud. Well, so so I kind of want to circle back to something that Keith was, was saying about wiping out the farm if we hunt on, on yeah. a dog. And it, that argument might hold water, but it, it brings up the question. A couple of years ago, we hunted behind a dog when Daniel was here. Yeah. And, and I don't... Old I, dog. It was a pretty old dog. <laughs> It was like, like it was, was like eleven or twelve years old. I think. I think he'd have to hunt it multiple times to quote. Yeah. Right. So we we like moved mouth, like three rabbits, and I don't even think we shot one that year. But that's a different dog. And so you got yeah. three beagles running. And if the, do- going. If the, the dog qu- is the actually is, effective, the question yeah. is: was was it a circumstance where the dog was ineffective? Was it something to do with the icy conditions? Because there was snow and ice on everything, thick ice, right? Or was it a habitat or predator issue? This was this was before you installed the CRP, right? Mm-hmm. And it seemed like it was on kind of a low end of like that trough of, I feel like, population dropping a little bit at that point too. Because however many years ago, and this ties into what we kind of want to talk about, watching the ebbs and flows of the rabbit population mm-hmm. and watching the habitat change and like how it's, it's one way of seeing how much the surrounding habitat is being affected as well. But just like however many years ago we would be able to go out there, I don't know, maybe not year after year, but like pretty consistently and have like eight to 12 rabbit days. Jump shooting them. Yeah. Really? Yeah, but the other factor. I mean, I, I do. Just our property, too. Like. I do think that it, it comes and goes and rises and falls a lot, like completely independently of any human action or mm-hmm. anything. It's, it's a predator and prey thing where like yeah. they're a prey animal that gets eaten by a lot of different predators, but they reproduce really quickly. So, you know, they can build up a big population and then predators come in and knocks them down a lot. And What's they can the come back quick. And, well, it's also so you're going to have coyotes, hawks, hawks, really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cats are, yeah. Blood. That was yeah. my next question. Do you think the feral cats are having an oh, impact? Yeah. Harsh winter will, is very tough on rabbits. Yeah. yeah, and if you get if you get a a, a hot a, a like big snowpack, snow harsh winters, it will kill off your rabbits. I th- we have I have a friend that he he runs his dogs back here mm-hmm. quite often, and usually doesn't shoot rabbits. He just comes back and runs them. and And he had told me about that like last year. He said that, and he's I mean he he does a, he, he's got grand champion dogs, and he knows a lot about them. And he said that. I think the two or three years uh, coming up into uh, it'd be like two years ago and three years ago, it was real hard on the rabbits. And he said that the numbers were way down, and that was one of the big reasons that everybody thought was it was because they a lot of them just didn't make it through the winter. And that was right around that time frame, twenty that would have been the nineteen ish, twenty twenty, yeah, where it was like polar definitely bowl, subpar. Polar vortex time. Today seemed good, uh, pretty Decent. yeah, yeah. yeah. But Decent in what means? What? No, in terms of the numbers yeah. oh, that they, we saw, okay. I, I'd say we probably saw eight to ten different rabbits, and only took 
four of them. Yeah. So okay. and there were more tracks that we were seeing out. out. Yeah, there were more oh, tracks, and, and, and if they're not up out of the, out of the holes, you can't do anything about it. But there were more tracks yeah. on the, on that one day fresh snow. So there's more. We were definitely we definitely walked fast a lot. I would say. Nice. Something I was curious of as a new hunter is how much timing and time of day affects the activity. I know we were jumping them and kicking them out of their burrows, but when you get further up with the sun is reaching peak noon and bright, how does that affect, you know, the effect, the efficacy of doing that kind of technique? I mean, uh, you, I mean they're, they're nocturnal animals. Mm-hmm. Like they feed at night. So, like, during, really? during the daytime when you're, like, yeah, effectively what trying to just kick know, them out of, like, where they're just, like, does. in the thickest uh, cover. Because that's where they're going to be spending their time. Because, like, we talked about this where we were like, man, I wonder if they're out in that CRP field, like, during the day, like, if we can kick them out. And it's like, if you're a hawk sitting in, like, one of those dead ash trees <laughs> on the side of that field and, like, you're a rabbit hopping around in that field, like, you're going to get poked quick. So I think a lot of times in the daytime, in the nighttime, we saw two rabbits out yeah, there. Yeah, we took a drive last night and nearly harvested one with my front left truck tire. <laughs> on those clover trails. Like, <laughs> oh, is, that, is, that a, is that a legal weapon for uh, for rabbit hunting in the state of Ohio? Can you use a Silverado? <laughs> I mean, there's times you can walk out there and you almost have to have to kick them to get them moving but then there's there's other times that yeah you know, the one that they're I not going to stick around and and i don't know right under me i don't know the science Which, behind did any that appear but they're, from they're a just kick? some days they're tighter yeah so i'm sorry what'd you ask oh, yeah, dude, I, kicked one up from under my foot. I, I asked if any appeared from a kick i just saw oh, yeah, rabbits mine was right in front of me yeah uh, we'll, I we'll have to show you the gopro two footage, footage from it but it's it's really really it was less than 10 feet from me when it stood up and left y'all were saying we were going to be kick and brush and they would you know pop out i didn't I mean, I only saw one rabbit the whole day. But. It's also intimidating because you're probably walking through the woods and you're just like, what is brush and what isn't? Like, what should <laughs> I be well, I, Oh, no. Time? That's a whole thing I could yeah, go on today. I bad. learned why plants have thorns today. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, fun Freddy, fact, those aren't supposed to be here. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone that's new to rabbit hunting as I was, the, the scale of quickness that this evolves over is 12 seconds was the time I believe we had on our GoPro between one shot that was well-placed on one rabbit and the next well-placed shot on another rabbit that yielded kills. So there is very little time in these situations to actually react. Yeah, they're booking it. Matter. They are very quick. I mean, you're in <laughs> such thick stuff that they only have to move 10 to 15 yards to be to a point where you're not going to have a shot on them. Yeah, exactly. and we were when we went into the, what was this, what do you guys, the CRP? Yeah, when off of that note, there's no way I could have made a shot in that. Yeah, yeah. area. It, you'd have you would have to bust one out of the grasses and get him going away from you in in. Yeah, the, for the for road, reference, can the, you describe what we were hunting in? Yeah, so most we started like the first part of the day. We started in like the section we call like the front woods, which is like used to be it's old reverted horse pasture from like thirty. 35 years ago something like that so there was a time in our lives when it was like this awesome golden rod like i used to call it like the old meadow or something like that when i was like young kid and then it just got taken over by silver maples we've kind of done all this stuff in like multiple videos about it but we started the day in there where it was mostly just like this big blackberry thicket nice (laughs) bunch of bunch of like rows mixed in there as well it's an old like ash clear cut too we took a bunch of ash trees out we started the day in that area that was by far the best region we were in i would say i think we probably ran into like four different rabbits in mm-hmm. a acre and a more, half more than that. Like we, that we left three in the front woods yeah and we took three out of it i think they liked that whatever the grass is yeah. up front there that we, we they were mm-hmm. that grass was laying half over yep. and, and we bumped in the st- One, two silver up, maple, we weren't even way. 50 50 yards away from the start of the yeah. woods. So we were in this yeah. like silver maple patch that Ben Basil sprayed like a year and a half ago. Blew up in this like first year, you know, poke oh, weed I and like a bunch of grassy threw, stuff. I also threw a grass seed in there. Yeah, so it's like crazy in <laughs> the there. And then that's also seeing this that's being laying over there. That's okay. also just like there's so much right there. There's like the trails. 
There's the yard, yeah, which is like four fantastic. different kinds of things that come together. Yeah, there's, there's a waterway going through there on like two different sides of it, and, and there's a patch, a, a apple, apple trees, clover patch. There's a big, there's like ag field right there. There's our whole like yeah, yard okay. with the pollinator patch, and just as like far all as these diversity on the farm, that's like the spot too. It's just like, it's just not a huge area. It's like three or four acres in total of the it's front really woods. Um, like that. Compare yeah. that. Compare that to the CRP. So the CRP is sixteen, 16 and a half acres. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the CRP is like it's in year one. So and like Ben can jump in as well whenever he wants. But right now it's just like foxtail, mare's tail, and then the switchgrass is blowing up in the spots where we drilled that in. But it's just like so thick grass, just like dead from the year before. So it's just like five feet in the middle of this yeah, field. Yeah, it's, it's head high. At, at some points it's so like as far as and it's very monotonous still because it's year one so like other than the places where we put brush piles there's like not much change other than edge on the trails until like shrubs start to show up later and you get more blackberry patches and stuff like that but and without having the piles out there there's no there's no holes for the rabbits out in the field so i think they might be out there but they're out there because they're coming from the perimeter yeah. And coming in, that mm-hmm. where over the years they're going to start residing in there. Yeah. Mm. So, that. yeah, that was pretty much the. And then another kind of section of area we hunted was on our neighbor's property. And it's just this like hellhole rose. <laughs> like, which part? I, mean, which part? I want to know your guys' experience which walking part? through that area. Wait, hold on. Which part? Which part? Ben, the, ben whining about cold hands part. <laughs> part where you you split off from well, us basic, a little bit and went along just the, the just a edge oh that's a graveyard, graveyard yeah, yeah, yeah. I got ash tree okay. graveyard that this restored cherries back there. huge cherries yeah huge but I mean there's ash gone down in there and, and now and, and the cherry are in there and there's some walnut and but then I there mean, was like there's like storm damage it's got nuts in there when there's definitely some down. storm damage yeah, in the cherries too dude that that woods is just. Yeah, that's half on the ground it's wild yeah jack will be back in a, a little bit but i want to know their experience of walking through that rose was your experience like, of that beautiful habitat type what are you referring to the like just walk to where uh the <coughs> vince, yeah, yeah, vince yeah, took yeah. some yeah, shots yeah, yeah. that shouldn't have been taken you know i ex- i expected to walk through you know tree limbs and you know, long grasses that if they get on your skin they give you a rash but you, I was battling you probably, thorns the whole day. <laughs> if I day. had to guess, you didn't anticipate like state penitentiary razor wire. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, he's not kidding. We were walking through like I got stuck many. T- I mean, you saw me. I I'm here having more trouble yeah. battling some yeah, tree on. that's not even moving than actually walking or shooting a rabbit moving, you know, ten feet per and second. It's, and yeah. it's weird. Not to mention you're trying to be ready to just skills. swing your gun up. And fire while you're just yeah, being exactly. grabbed by Exa- four That's why I was saying there's plans. no way I could have made a shot in the CRP. <laughs> no, yeah. no chance. Mm-mm. And then on top of that, I'll extend the conversation further. I noticed when I, I'm holding my gun, and I've never really held a gun. I'm walking all day long. Mike, you said it early you, yesterday that I would, you know, I hike whatever. But you know, if you don't hold a gun, you don't. You don't know what it's actually like. It's different. Specific muscles I've never used before. I'm holding my gun. I, I don't even know how to describe the position for anyone who's listening. But ready position? Uh, sure. Mm. You know, like it, on my shoulder, but the barrel's, barrel's, pointed, barrel's down. pointed down at the ground. Yeah. You like know, it. the butt of the gun is kind of in his armpit, kind of not. It's it's really just like a like a relaxed. Almost ready. I don't know. What I'm, I'm honestly like relax it's, it's, is an understatement when I'm walking <laughs> through this bramble. <laughs> it's like ten foot rows, like crawling up huge cherry trees. Yeah, like, if you're not I, aware, like, multifloral rose is very though, invasive. Weird. There's not natural predators. It sucks. It will it destroy all. your clothing. Burn it. All the Burn thorns to are the ground. all the thorns are hooked. That is the big thing that makes it really difficult to walk through in comparison to something like Greenbrier. And so that's why we're talking about getting grabbed because the thorn hits you and it does not want to just come unstuck. Yeah, the more you pull, the worse it gets. It, it's like a Chinese finger roll out. trap. You gotta roll. Yeah, you always have to one. roll. It's it made it spin. really engaging though, I will say. I think that's why I, that was a one thing about the it's whole experience I dance. really liked. Yeah. It's a weird little dance. I, I felt like I was very of, there. Yeah. I was living in the rabbit's world. But, but yeah. so what, what you got to understand is 
this is exactly the way that you're going to realize what your property needs for its health, right? You know, for your health, you, you, you gotta, you gotta walk your property. And I'm, I'm not talking just a, a leisurely cruise. You gotta get into the weird areas and see what's in there because again, none of this multi flora is supposed to be there. It's not ideal habitat for these rabbits where we found the rabbits. Yes. There was multi flora around, but they were in the grasses and they were in the treetops and the woody cover that was on the ground. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was pretty. They don't want to be grabbed by thorns, right? Well, they have no choice whether they want to be around the multiflora rose when it's everywhere. But, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, th- this kind of activity can help a property owner, whether you're toting a shotgun after rabbits in the woods or not, or if you're just toting a camera just, for birds. If you just want to see you more wildlife, you can go see in what the healthier forest looks like and get out there and realize you need to make some serious changes. I think that's one of the advantages of being a knowledgeable hunter is understanding the environment that you hunt and understanding what how things react. You form a connection with with your land and, and, you know, every plant on it. Particularly in times of year when a lot of people aren't going to be experiencing much wilderness. Like people don't tend to necessarily hike as much in February when there's ice all over the place. Uh, but it, you know, you can learn a lot from that time period where there isn't like thick vegetation that's blocking a lot of your view. You have these woody type, like and you know, brushy stuff that you can see that's not just blocked by a bunch of leaves. Right. And so you really see it's a stripped down version of what's winter. there. Your, your property is a different property in six months time. It'll be unrecognizable during leaf out. <laughs> um, that's I feel like this year, and especially with the CRP, like it being the first year. It was just, like, way more noticeable this year walking from... And we were able to hunt our neighbor's property as well and kind of see the differences in habitat of, like, whoa, no one's doing anything over here for a long time. And then, like, the stuff where we have been fortunate enough to just, like, really manipulate the habitat and just, like, how... Like Jack was saying, the different ways that things are reacting to the changes in the habitat and just, like, the benefits are really starting to flourish at this point, I feel like. I mean, I've been at this property for 10 years now? 11 years now? Since 2011, 2012. Yeah. Was when I was when I met Ben when I went, you know, went, went to college with him. And what, what you'll, you'll find me saying here is that I have seen more rabbits on this hunting trip less than a year after y'all installed that CRP than I have in any other given year. Even the year where we harvested six, I think we saw more. Why do you think that is? I think it's the habitat change. You, you, but we didn't the, change the habitat in the area that we saw those rabbits. I mean, we did uh, see our so, food. So the produces. theory there is that that is such a safe haven because of how thick it it's is out in that CRP. Even it's one it's summer just in, a yeah. factory for them to develop their population. And then they branch out into the surrounding area. It may so also be like a, part of it is, like I said, the weather you know has been a, has been favorable for the rabbits in the last year or so. Yeah. So the could numbers be. have gotten like you better. said that, that may, wicked hard winter could have. But gone the bad. more, but in theory, the more numbers you put into that situation, say a hard winter, the more numbers you put in there. In theory, the more you bring out of that winter too. Right. Well, I think the whole thing with the different. Yeah, but. I think the whole thing with the different areas and thinking about the impact that the CRP has had maybe isn't even necessarily that like, oh, we didn't see that many rabbits like in the CRP, but kind of like what Keith was saying about when they would be in the CRP. Like maybe they are hanging out and residing in a lot of the areas adjacent where we did see a decent number of rabbits, but they're actually only going into that CRP in the evening, dawn or dusk, where they don't feel like they're you know, completely exposed, and they got giant birds of prey you, flying over their heads. Do you remember when like, we were putting, <laughs> that's a real thing. We were putting the brush piles out three weeks ago or whatever? Oh, how many how many birds crazy. did we see? Oh, it's crazy. It's we nuts. saw some and, stuff and, that and we couldn't... That would make them nocturnal. Oh, yeah. I mean, because there were, what, yeah. three... Three or four hawks, or hawks and weird stuff that were like didn't. We have don't really sure. know. We didn't like know if the one was Northern an owl, maybe, or a maybe. beast. You know, yeah, Vince, we thought maybe Vince a hairy. I actually saw something really, really weird when we were heading back out. We took the truck out to go pick up that fourth rabbit once we were done with our hunt. Um, it it looked like a small peregrine. I'm I'm yeah, not lying. It looked we like, saw it looked that like a peregrine. Yeah, and it was like oh, it's a blue jay or bluebird. 
No. The curved Way wing. Than what do we think that's smaller kestrel? than a than a red tailed hawk? Kestrel, I think, is something kestrel. we thought it about could, for could that. Could have been a kestrel. But just something about the shape of the bird. Yeah, real screamed curved. peregrine. Yeah, yeah. real round. Uh, we saw a teardrop looking like, thing. Dude, that's the slowest. There's no peregrine cliffs on here either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it wouldn't make Knox sense. County. I don't know if they inhabit this area, but that's the only thing I could think of. It was not a hawk. You actually may see it in the video if Keith throws it in there. We did see that one bird. I don't know. If I, I think. Would, I I zoomed in pretty good. We'll be able to see it. The I haven't watched one it back. Bird. The, the one that the we don't know what it is. Here. We the think it might one. be a Harrier, but... Uh, a Harrier? It just flies you know slow, jet, right? very, like, swooping. It's also a uh, it does the same thing. Kind of not very narrow, like, pretty oh. chunky, I guess I'd say, wings. Um, mm. Large. Yeah, it almost looks wings. like an owl. <laughs> but, um, all right, sorry to interject and totally change subject. So I do just want to say I'm really proud of this group for making it 31 and a half minutes into this without any f bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because Vince is asleep. <laughs> Probably so. So, question for the more experienced hunters in the group: What do you think is more important, understanding the animal you're targeting or the environment that you're targeting the animal in? I assume that there's a relationship between the two. Yes. That must be understood for peak effectiveness. But what do you think is more effective? Dude. Is it understanding your land or is it understanding the properties and the characteristics of the animal you're hunting and understanding what they may be doing at certain times of year or certain times of day? That's a good, that's a really, really good question. Is this an interview or Drop like what's going on here? Yeah. 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 Hard yeah. question. When we said save it for the podcast, this is exactly yeah. what we were talking about, brother. That's a good question. Uh, My boss hates the, me for short these answer, questions. Yes. <laughs> short answer, yes. It's both, dude. You got, you got it. Yeah, I think they play. go, I think they go hand in hand, but like, I guess more directly, it would be more important to know what the animal's doing because that would be the quicker way of finding it rather than knowing the environment. But I, I think, think a lot of the animal's behavior is going to be today, right now? dependent yeah. upon the environment, yeah. if, if, you could, if you could put it that way. And so to add on to that, what do you think the propensity of longer day hunts, firing off several shots earlier in the day, what does that do to That's animals later on? You know, firing off three shotguns. We blasts. started where we started. We saw a bunch of rabbits, and then we started seeing way less rabbits. And maybe that wasn't just because their rabbits yeah. were only in that area, but they just went into holes as soon as they heard pa 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 pa. I'm talking. No, they they heard yeah. like twelve gunshots. So this like, goes into Ben. I feel like Ben wants to talk about some <laughs> the big buck, dude. Yeah, the big. <laughs> the big we buck. shot a big buck. All right, I'll be honest. Rabbit, a big buck rabbit. Experience. All bucks and does. That's a big buck. As soon as I jumped, like I, it was one. It was the second or third rabbit we had jumped. Third, that we had jumped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I stepped on a pile and it instantly shot like directly back, and I was just like backwards. Yeah. So I, I remember, saw you as turn around. As soon as around. I saw it, dude, I was like, "That's one of the bigger rabbits that I've ever seen," and it like ran back. We eventually looped back. Was, and it, was that when we turned around the first time? So this was the first rabbit yeah. that we actually yeah. harvested. So we got okay. we got most probably seventy five percent of the way through the front woods. And Ben had this rabbit basically jump at his heel and backdoor us. And when I saw Ben pull up, aiming back the direction we'd already walked, behind the line, obviously nobody was there, and then he pulled his firearm down because he had no shot, I turned around and sprinted up the trail, located the rabbit, and then basically called the rest of you guys to come assemble on a really it, long and that's turned into a Vince successful got. hunt. That's the one Vince Yeah, got. so, so okay. we, I we set you. back up on the general area where I'd last seen the rabbit, and I, I think it was either Alex or I kicked it up, and it ran straight to Vince. He unloads, pretty sure he wounded it, and then Ben's GoPro footage, just rolling that thing in the trail <laughs> was so beautiful. But, yeah, that was one so, of the biggest rabbits I've ever seen. So here's my theory on this rabbit, because this one kind of – hit a little different i thought it's that spot we literally always jump a rabbit right there so it's basically if you can imagine like it's the end of a waterway where it dead ends it, there's like four habitat types that come together there's Dead. woods there's hellhole briar there's clear cut ash above it there's property line field on the other side water marsh yeah. apples apple tree there's apple like tree. literally everything comes together right there but the way that he was bedded we'll say first of all we had already shot two or three times so like he's thinking about it He's, he's like, watching. Something's he's, going he's on. He's facing us, at he's least. He's facing he's us, wise. at least. 
I come in there slithering. I'm not making much noise. Slithering. Slithering. And I finally get into the point where I, when I actually kicked him, I'm sure he was just like, dude, I've been watching you for like 10 minutes. I'm I'm not going to go the way you want. Mm-hmm. It, it seemed like a backdoor like deer move. Whereas like he didn't even think, he didn't like bound the one way. It was just like he was set up to bound back to the west. And that's not he even. That, and then that's the kind of the loop thing dad was talking about where he was like, he's not going to leave this whole habitat patch. No. Be... He's just going to like hit the next great habitat, which is where we jumped the first one. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of holed up there for a second. And we played it right. I think feel like in years past, we've done that same drive. We've hit that same rabbit in that area. And we've just, it's gone back and we're like, we'll get it later. We didn't pursue on it. And yeah, this time we, we do, pursued we on it that and that was lot, sick. For sure. Like we were mm-hmm. like, all right, he's not just leaving the hole. Well, you got to yeah. wonder how many times those, those rabbits do that without just us. Yeah. We have, we have a Lewis, our cat. Yeah. How many yeah. times does he probably force that thing to do that same? And, and I was how just going to fox yeah. or other things force them, and they get in a comfort zone, and they stay in there, and they just keep circling back. So yeah, yeah they don't like to get away from where they're comfortable. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's, I'm sure that's why he circled back. Totally not. Just like we're not. Yeah, definitely not saying it from the perspective of just like yeah, this thing's like like a deer where it's like it's over hunted, it's bedding by a parking lot or something like that no but i think this one did like, set himself up to where he could bound hard to the west like but for any you think they for any do you predator, think these like, animals think that deep mm-hmm. dude there's a, I I think there's a wall it may not be much thinking for them this could all just be instinctual He's yeah like, well there's say. a disturbance this way i'm gonna face it so i can see it if it advances and the wind. On me. i think beyond even just instinct it is kind of just memory it's less like thinking in terms of how we think about things but they just experience something over and over and over and over and over and it becomes a reaction that, you know, we have reactions like that where somebody throws something at you and you dodge it. Not right. because you're thinking about what's flying at you, but simply because you've had things fly at you and, and you the, get out of the all way. All the rabbits that get killed, they, they're not the ones we jumped. Yeah, that's fair the enough. one. He got fair that's enough. a big buck. Like, because that's the one. That's, one of the things that's right. our guy. That's one of the things that I was... We got him. I was actually <laughs> surprised. <laughs> you, they can't put anything on the internet that isn't true, right? So I, I just out of curiosity one day, I looked it up, and the average lifespan for a rabbit in the wild is not much more than 15 or 16 months. Yeah, really? Because of their predation, and it's just a relatively short-lived animal. Like a cottontail rabbit in captivity, I think the max they've had is like eight or nine years. So that So to find... A buck rabbit the size that we have that's clearly a, an older, more mature rabbit, right? That first one? Yeah. He's not going to make the same mistakes that a younger rabbit might. Same principle with a deer. You get a five-year-old buck, six-year-old buck, he is not making any of the mistakes that he made as a two-year-old that almost got him Just killed. more experiences. That many more coyotes have run that waterway oh, yeah. down towards him. Right. He's just like, oh, this is working every time. Like... This is a move that works for me, yeah. (laughs) And this is part, I feel, of becoming a experienced hunter is understanding your relationships and the experiences of the animals and how they think, how they... they Absolutely. It's just spending time with them, man. Spending time chasing them and thinking the way that they do. The number number of times that Ben and I have gotten on white-tailed deer on public land, just going, hopping on our map and seeing a, a a creek bottom where you get three or four funnels coming together in one spot and we're like it's just a no-brainer there's got to be deer in there and the second we get in there we find the deer sign we only know that because we've spent so many time chasing these deer in this part of the state right i feel like what ties into what you were saying there as far as like you understand where they're going to be at and then in that scenario where it's like then you have the experience of the hunt where it's just like, get on that thing, find where it's going to go, know where, know what part of that habitat is going to be the next region where it escapes to, and just can you understanding e- the land after you've, you know, found the animal. Can you extend that to the rabbit, though? Because, when, I mean, I'm seeing this rabbit for two seconds maximum. So, I, so I don't know. Right? What do you, yeah, what do you mean? Well, when you're, I imagine, I, well, I, again, I imagine I've never been on a deer hunt. But I, I, I see it as a much more thought-provoking process where you're navigating the land with the Long deer in mind the whole time. I think that's but the, the, you know, yeah. we went into it saying rabbits might be yeah. 
there, rabbits might be here. But after that, it kind of just felt if if you see the rabbit, it's definitely a totally shoot, different scale, and then it's yeah. probably going to repeat. It's going to go into a similar brush pile. But as far as breaking it down, so good, good point. Yeah, that's how a lot of people do gun hunt deer. And and you're Uh, what? It's almost how we were hunting, but on a bigger scale. It's on a quarter mile scale rather than fifty yards. Yeah, you're planning their mindset. What bedding area are they going to dive out and go to? So so with rabbits, hell, I was not doing that. Yeah, (laughs) we did not expect it. So with rabbits, you need cover like every fifty yards. They need cover like every fifty yards, roughly, to be able to have enough safety to not die every time a fox or a bobcat or a coyote walks in the woods, or eight guys with shotguns and GoPros, right? (laughs) So if if guys with GoPros. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the GoPros, GoPros were real dangerous, man. That's <laughs> that, that's what we bagged the last two with, was the GoPros. Sir, you such a total side than. tangent. Uh, Mr. Robinson, did you get your GoPro shot? No. Uh, no, we didn't. Unfortunately. Apparently, it's, it, it, the it effort, died right on it. Turned yeah. it on. So, so he... He the did. rabbit. The video did. died as quickly yeah, as the rabbit both did. Died Shout out point. to GoPro batteries, bro. Yeah, we love GoPro batteries in the cold. They're really good. <laughs> so dad <laughs> shot a rabbit today at like two <laughs> two steps. Headshot. It was the cleanest shot we had. But basically what a hat it was very brutal, but he walked he was just saw it. It was right beside him and it hopped once and it was just like, well, the thing's not moving, and he had time to click the GoPro and pull his glove off and shoot the thing from like two yards away. The, and uh, the rabbit was an organ donor, so he decided to donate his brain and and eyeball to the field. But that one is exactly. not on video, but that was the only one outside of this front woods area that we're talking about that we Really got a shot at. Yeah. There, I, we saw other ones, but I don't. Know I shot we, at one. I shot twice. I emptied both barrels on one, and I probably just gave yeah, him a good right, spanking. Yeah, yeah. I he was at like thirty five, forty yards, and I'm using a pretty oh, open yeah, joke. So I, that one, he's still out there. He's okay. I, so I pulled a, up on one in the big multi floor rose patch, and uh, which one? Which which <laughs> which, patch? which patch specifically? Oh, you know that yeah, that one that's beside property. the other one. And uh, I pulled up on it and definitely had a shot and just completely wiped out. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm right, talking Mel. feet. Oh, feet oh, oh, yeah. in no. the air, like <laughs> straight look, look, down, look, wonk, looking like the stick figure. So, on the as side. I'm like making a move on a rabbit, I'm seeing the rabbit running. I'm like, oh, oh. It, it was the one Bowl that. Up. Ben, it was the one that I had kicked you from that blowdown that went under the no, log. No, I didn't shoot. I was about it to was shoot. It was that rabbit. It I wonder up. why nobody shot on that. that oh, was, I was about oh. to shoot, but my feet I decided to go I out from under me. Safety off. <laughs> oh, my God. I still think you I'm and I just filming. I'm just like, well, I guess nobody can see The trigger it. wouldn't Oh, I can see this. Which part? Is that a big blowdown? When we were in the East Woods, I, um, I had a rabbit that just squeezed underneath a main trunk. Nobody shot on that one. Just before the it went in there, I went. Oh, and my safety's on. on. The safety's on. Like, oh. I must have been on the. Fu- was that when when I was creeping down? Yes. The, yeah, you were between me and Al. Um, okay, I mean that that is one where I was Wait. very much wondering you why is this so, rabbit not dead. So I think we learned a lesson dead. on that one before that. The, the, I was up on the field. The day. lesson I would say we learned was that yeah. we didn't have yeah. people oh, in yeah, position that's when I got stuck to shoot if a rabbit kicked up. We we were kind of like. I got my ass. Straggled my out, table. and, you know, <laughs> we were still in our line, but we didn't actually have people in a position where where this rabbit was supposed to go and did go. We didn't have – if Vince was up 15 we were yards further, he we were slowing wasted down. We hadn't been seeing the action, so we were kind we were of just like – We we weren't – Yeah. We didn't have drivers and setters. Like, we yeah. didn't have that mentality in that one. But the front woods, man, we've got that in an interesting way. I feel like we've we're, we're – Can you define killing. driver and setter? For yeah, me. So like a drive, like in that one, we were all a kicker. And a we shooter. were all kicking. It's tough oh, okay. with rabbits too because it's so small scale. But like we knew if we kicked one there, it's probably going to the next habitat type, into that woods on the neighbors that it went to, and like we kicked it and then it went there and like all it takes is having the people on the field edge just forty yards up ahead or twenty mm-hmm. yards up ahead 
in like a U shape. Mm-hmm. Mike even talked about the gun there. You, and it's that, like, that an, it's like an line. inverted V where you're just you're yeah yeah yeah. I got that. Your, your forward. People That's when I was because we literally all looked at that downfall and we're like, "There's a hundred percent a rabbit in that. If there's one in here, and we've seen tracks, like there's a rabbit in that. That literally was right where we picked. I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't the only rabbit in that, and there were others that just sat still and just didn't bust. Yeah, could be. honestly, it was a mass, that seems was the a way to beat the hunter if you're the rabbit. Oh, yeah. it, it was oh, it was a big buck a move, forty yard radius of continuous structure. Nobody could look back door because we're all falling over on ice. <laughs> yeah, icy cold today. It was like twenty two mile an hour wind blowing. I was whining. It was cold. no, no. It was twenty two with a forty mile an hour wind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real feel real feel in the single digits. Yeah. It's cold. How so we it, decided Jack? we'd bring the rabbits in and walk. It was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you looked very good, though. You had the full suit on. Yeah, dude. Even the I full suit. <laughs> you were swagged up. Enough. I still think you needed to do a good old penguin <laughs> slide on some of that ice. He tried. I agree. I tried. <laughs> it was not successful. <laughs> not as successful as our four rabbits. What are some other... You pass my beautiful notes over yeah, here. Yeah, dude. There's all sorts of stuff, and, like, I don't know how you want to interpret it, really. Interpret like, what? What know, I wrote like down? The things you wrote down. There's so all many. All right. Um, first time shooting an animal. That's my first note. Um, yeah. That was interesting. Yeah, just I like, don't think it really processed it yet. So yes. what was your experience following that process all the way through? Oh. From mentally preparing to shoot an animal, taking its life, to gutting it, cleaning it, and cooking it. Okay. How do you feel? Don't uh, forget eating it. During the actual moment, I, there was no thought. I was going so fast. I, honestly, I still don't think I actually shot it. You did. You were claiming I shot it and that you it did. was tumbling. Well, yeah. I still call BS and you're hyping me up. No, I think it... I've like absolutely. No, definitely I rolled. wouldn't lie about it, that. It rolled right in front of us. Regardless, yeah. I don't know how I hit it, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I Turkey. merely so, okay. So what happened was <laughs> Mike Mike bopped his Yeah, so right? Yeah. Like five t- ten seconds before me. We we watched the, the footage, it was a twelve second gap between when I shot and rolled mine to when you heard I heard yelling in my GoPro audio, yeah. which was you and Alex up to my left. <laughs> Well, I, w- I looked <laughs> over to my right because I thought I saw a brush pile move. I, I knew there was an animal there, but I had thought it was your shot. So then I looked over. I, I had my gun ready. I put the safety off like a big boy. Like a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold. Uh, oh, it was perfect. The second rabbit is starting to scurry. The right they they, had you, they hadn't heard you say that you hit that one. Oh, uh, yeah, they did. So no, they did. Me. We did, but How? they. You didn't hear that they really? said like, you "Oh, we got it right." Or at least no, it. no. I, yeah. I, I heard. I just thought, like, shot, "Yeah, we I had a rabbit." Yeah, I wasn't. I, I wasn't sure if you guys had had dropped that rabbit, oh, yeah. and then when that would come up through there, I thought it was the same one. And it, it took exactly a while, exactly. and they said, "Well, they have one down there." I, yeah. I thought it was. It was the same a good one. double. It was nice. It was a good double. Yeah, and and that was going into the experience. As I was saying, it happened so fast. I don't think I really what perceived was the, in the moment yeah. what was going on. After the fact, I was, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think because I didn't see the bullets enter or the, the pellets it just enter the rabbit. just so fast, yeah. Yeah, it, I didn't really feel like I took its life, so. I feel like, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the side of hunting where it's kind of always interesting to hear. <laughs> That? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of always interesting to hear, like... Sponsored by White Claw. People, people's, like, perspective on that. And, like, obviously going into this, you got your hunting license, you know, obviously, exactly what you're getting into as far as hunting this thing. And yeah, you're going to sure. go and eat it. And it's kind of interesting to hear yeah, what people's thought process is after they do that. But I think I think the, the reason I was comfortable doing everything I did after I took the shot was because I, I personally feel that if I'm going hunting, I should... I should eat my kill. If you, I'm going you to, see it through. if I'm, yes, exactly. Yeah. If I'm going to yep. take the responsibility of using a gun, which is, you know, this crazy invention that throws objects at other things at very fast speeds, then if I'm going to use that to eat, then, you know, it, it's on me to clean and gut the animal. And I was very happy I did that. And to be honest, 
the only thing I had to overcome <laughs> was <laughs> taking those guts out. But uh, I don't know. The whole experience, it, w- it was pretty cool, and I think I'll, uh, I'll, I'll never forget it for sure. Well, I mean, but the actual shooting, like I said, the actual shooting, I, I, that was just so it's, fast. I it's also know. it's I much different when that. if you're in a situation where you're. That's the cool thing about coming in rabbit hunting versus like if you're even even, even squirrel, blind even squirrel hunting's different because it's like you're putting you're the only person putting that shot on that that animal. Whereas like rabbit hunting, it's like, dude, team, we got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it, you have like written down teamwork. It like you takes your, away. It also your booty. For the first time you kill something, it might take away that aspect of like, oh shoot. I mean, shoot, it's yeah, almost. I'm the one that did that. It's like. Yeah, exactly. I kind of did. It. Maybe hit that. It's almost like, like yeah, a hockey you goal. The crap out of that thing. And then you're just like, oh. <laughs> there are gonna be people with but an it, assist on it, right? Yeah. Oh, so for like sure. the person who kicked it up, and then maybe the person who wounds it and slows it down for the next person to finish it. Two assists on the guy who scores the goal, like. It's just the way it is. But at the end of the day, it all goes in the crock pot and it all goes in the stomach. Yeah. But I really appreciate hearing you, especially as a first time hunter, saying that you want to see it through and like, oh, yeah, the there's meat, a, make sure that it doesn't go to waste. You're not just killing. I would have felt horrible had I not yeah. gutted it mm-hmm. myself. I would have. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it. or just <laughs> even <laughs> saying like, that's gross. It's not fair to say it's gross if you're going to carry out a weapon and kill something. It's animal. carnal. It's primal. Mm-hmm. It yeah. Is. If I, exactly. It's, if I'm going to kill you, I am I'm, okay, I'm going to kill the animal. <laughs> there you go. All right. If I'm going to kill you, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> it's been a long night. <laughs> it's written on this I'm going to see it through. Yeah, and I was, you. you know, I was very proud of myself for doing that. I've never done this. I didn't grow up in a rural area with guns or anything, so, you know. It, the number of people who would have just said no to the gutting and the skinning and whatnot. Yeah, like, exactly. You, if, you, uh, you stepped right in there. If We're all I proud told of you, my I mom that I got an animal today, she would go, oh, that's disgusting. Why would you ever do because it tasted yeah, good, It's mom. a new experience. It's a different way of life. Because I eat meat, and this time I actually acquired the meat that yeah, I ate. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, know, I I, I have to admit, I love meat. Dude, I eat it no. all the time. I buy it from the store all the time. And somebody else is killing it for you yes, in that situation. Here's it's still getting killed. The machine is killing yeah. it for me. I haven't purchased ground beef in two and a half years. Yeah, I'm jealous. I I get, get on some deer you, drive. Y'all, yeah, y'all I was going to say, so, do you, like, moving, like, or, you know, like forward from this situation, do you have interest in a different style of hunting? Well, that's, coming that's a great soon. extension of what uh, Mike, Jack, and Vince and I were talking about. As someone that didn't shoot today, and I think I learned a lot by not shooting, the mm-hmm. value of... A you can learn a lot by not shooting a gun or sure. just observing. Just the ride along. I yeah. think that there is some real value in being able to harvest your own meat and that you can really take that far. I am very interested in pursuing deer and turkey because those are large sources of meat. You yeah. harvest one of those, you have a legitimate source of food for a duration. Here's your perspective, I've, dude. The buck I shot two years ago, I got 80 pounds of meat off of that thing for a $30 tag. Huh. And a couple hundred dollars in camouflage clothing and a tree stand <laughs> and, and, and a bow and, 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 and some arrows. Those are good. You gotta have a truck good, to get man. the deer home, right? And you know that's a very good point. It might not, if you're looking at this from an economical perspective, you might be more economical going to the grocery store and just buying some chicken, or maybe some ground beef. There's, maybe. there's two sides to hunting, though. Yeah. There's there's like the the eating side, and then there's like totally the game side the pursuit side and like i think and it so goes hand in hand to be your in soul, it. right you're investing in 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 yourself when you do this cuz you, you learn things to. about yourself that you never would if you hadn't exactly. you have to be in it for the game side of it and the sportsmanship of it because it's just not ethical to do it economically i think from what i saw today for yeah. small game well, i mean people already did it and they wiped them out yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's true yeah, yeah. People did it and like wiped them out back in. I don't know. What the, I want to. I want to answer your question though, Keith. You, you, you had asked me, Mike drama. <laughs> Mike drama. We have an extra mic, and if Dad doesn't want it, then we can have. Hand it over <laughs> here. Jack's over here. Jack's over here. Excuse oh, me. Long oh, arm oh, microphone. Watch that. Watch yeah. that. Yeah. I just feel like Jack's doing the. Jack's being the robot arm, and he's getting a good a workout. Don't worry. Mike laying dead. I can I hold a mic for Dad if he has input. Today, <laughs> <several miles. laughs> Wait, turn that on, Jack. Oh, Dad. Yeah, I don't know. 
Switch in the backpack. Yeah. Jack on. Okay, I do want to so, answer Keith's question, yeah, though. Ahead. So, in okay. the car, I was speaking with Mike, Jack, and Young Vince, and we were talking about... So, I had said the type of hunting that I was attracted to was long-range uh, marksmanship. So, having a rifle, scoping in, learning how to deal with the wind, and putting the bullet where I knew I was going to get a kill. And Mike made a great point, and he said that you don't really get to experience the beauty of the animal. There's not really an interaction. It's just a matter of... You lack the intimacy with a rifle kill. Exactly, exactly. And I think I really resonated with that point. And even after I had killed the rabbit, which I have to admit didn't feel that infinite or intimate because it happened so fast, and I barely even... I don't... Frankly, I don't know how I hit it. Um... (laughs) I, I really choke. resonate with, with that thought because it, it feels like that's the whole point of going hunting. And that's what I really liked about it is that I, I felt like, you know, even though I had a gun, I wasn't just going to the grocery store. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it was In really a way, enjoyable. it was empowering. It made me feel like, okay, it made me feel like, you know, I today I literally just learned how to load a shotgun. I was like, okay, worst case scenario, if I need to go out in the wild, I can sh- possibly get some food that I need. So You, you got, learned how to aim a shotgun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you you actually learned correctly. <laughs> Very the fun part. fast. Here's the fun part. is, is so He yes, takes I, his higher I, safety course. He gets his, his hunting license. <laughs> this morning showed him how to operate a pump action 20 gauge, how to load the shells in the tube, how to put them into the... Uh, this is me. Yeah, no. Um, how, how to put them into the uh, in, into the chamber and whatnot, and I'm like, all right, hey, you're good. And he goes, wait, how 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 do I make sure that it, I'm gonna hit what I I'm said, shooting how do at? I aim? And I'm like, how do I that's what I'm I like, said. what? He's like, how do I aim? I'm like. Oh, it's just a quick. It's gun. not called. I, I don't just press L two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good, it's good, man. It's left trigger. You're fine. Not to so, sound like too unsafe to where it's like, oh, like he's never shot a gun because I feel like being around you, I was very like impressed by your muzzle awareness. He's got the and mental, like, yeah, the mental like awareness. Very, oh, I had prepped hard. I'm yeah. not kidding. I was very aware of the. Da- I was probably thinking more about my gun than I was the hunt the whole time. That's sweet. That's yeah, not. That's, that's like, not a bad mindset to have. Yeah. It felt safety it, I mean, first. Every single step I took, even when I'm climbing over a tree. Is my safety on? Is my finger, is my hand yeah. in the right place? Am I taking a position where if I fall, my gun might point the wrong way? Yeah. If, is Jack walking in front of me? He should walk behind me because if yeah. I fall, I'm going to fall back. And my and the more you think out. about that, the more just, natural it becomes, too. You like realize you're, you're, you're ready to do temper stand improvement around a chainsaw. Like, oh, like you're, ready, you're ready to go, man. You're, What's you're not... Let's not go down that like If I'm moving hole. over something, I got to make sure I'm not going to hurt myself. <laughs> Cha-ching! I, I missed it because I was talking. What else is new? I want to finish my Don't thought, though. I would bow hunt. <laughs> bow hunt deer? You want to try bow hunting deer? I would bow hunt. Dude, you deer, do some... deer drives? I saw your bow hunting video. Al, show me your bow hunting video yeah. when you, you oh, that was snagged it with, yeah. y'all, with you. Yeah. If you can get an animal like Dude, that honestly, within like, 10 yards, unaware. Deer drives? Guns I'd be pooping my pants. Life the thrill changing. of like the, that large animal ground. I'm like, I've never been it sounds elk beautiful. hunting. I've seen elk and everything, this, but like, just like never hunted. godly creature stare at you. And you're like, I don't know. That just feels it's like a, one like, of the most present things you can do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like. Then there's the whole like game aspect of hunting where it's like once you kill that thing, it's like, okay, I've defeated that, but that's a huge responsibility and like it, you know, it's a heck of a thing to wrap your head around when you're doing it oh, on that sure. side of things. And, like for sure. I had a thought about something that when I as, it was on the first couple rabbits, something I was like I was trying to think of like things that I might be taking for granted as somebody who's done a few different mm-hmm. rabbit hunts. You know, might be Multiple really thinking about, but just doing it anyways. So, like, I'm busting through brush, and I'm just, like, standing there, and I'm like, I need to be, like, 10 feet ahead so I can shoot this extra 30 yards just mm-hmm. because I know the woods, and I grew up in the woods, and it's like, I know that rabbit's going to run through that spot. And, like, I think that's a huge thing that you kind of just learn over time is, like, what's your shooting lane? You learn that in deer hunting, too. Mm-hmm. Like doing deer drives. Yeah, I don't think I grasp that at all. No, but... The, and today, all that matters is you worry about you, where you're you did. Is you did, though, mm-hmm. because you, you just straight up said 10 minutes ago in that CRP, you knew for a fact you weren't going to be able to have a shot. 
Mm-hmm. You weren't going to be able to pull your gun up. You weren't going to be able to see like, your oh. target. Exactly. So you, you have that concept Sorry, of your I mean, awareness. I hijacked. You, yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 I totally hijacked this too. But like <laughs> what he's saying is is you'll you'll get into the woods and you'll realize I have no shot here. I can't move. I can pull my gun up, but I can't move either side if it's running sideways. So, oh, But if I sure. move up here around this tree, I'm in the clear and I'm not, you know, I, I got all this range. You get it. You really yeah. do. Knowing what you're not able to do is as important as knowing what you're able to yeah. do. Mm-hmm. And, and like, and especially, I think that'll play into like as you, you come, we do doing deer drives too. Like that gets much more specific because you're throwing one bullet and their escape route is like not 10 feet away from you. It's like probably 60 yards away from you or 50, whatever it is. You got to read that in the moment. And like that's part of that, like, learn, like Jack was saying, learn your animal and like what. And that's just the more experience you get, the more like you learn. Yeah. Like I was just gonna that yeah. rabbit's gonna do. You know, we think this whole time like and, and today, all you had to pick up on was just don't shoot another person. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty sweet thing that like you didn't. I, shoot yeah, another. I love. Oh, I was yeah. I was so anal <laughs> about win. that in my own mind. I love being sweet. able to and watch. Now you can start thinking. Now that that's already gonna be like innate. Now, and now you're just gonna be like, oh, I need to have like that shot lane there, thirty yards out. Boom. Yeah. You, like this transition, he's gonna run that edge. I can actually shoot that. I can't shoot that, so let me shoot this. I think, like, something with hunting that, like, I really appreciate is the the fact that you are pretty much, you are learning something completely new mm-hmm. every time you're, like, going hunting. It's just, like, even, whether it's Until the smallest thing or you just have this epiphany of, like, oh, you learn something, like, something just clicks, but you're, like, you're always just going to learn something tiny. Yeah, and, and this property just what keeps you doing it. This yeah. property changes every single time I come back to it. Every year, every season, something is different. So changes it's too. not the same property. You know, there's an old saying like, "A man may fish the same river a thousand times or the same hole in a river, but it's not the same river, and he's not the same man." So it's the same thing with woods. It really is. So here's a question that might be slightly divergent. If you have no exposure to hunting, how would you get into hunting without people who have experience directly? I what would you do? Thing. I think, I it think honestly, tough. it is like that. That is the biggest resource that you really can have is finding people that do know at least some about it and, and absorbing what it. they know. I mean, you could start I mean, by watching the hunting public on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> there's, Ohio, 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 Ohio. there's like hunt there's a lot out. of good resources <laughs> <laughs> start right here on this channel <laughs> it's all ruined dude <laughs> all right I'm let's, an Asian uh, who was planted here by the hunting here. public <laughs> <laughs> um but also there's there's like hunting clubs and stuff too that in like certain places where you can join too that like i feel oh, like there's a oh, kind no. of a way to <laughs> i had a sportsman club growing up yeah, that was yeah. local. That's where I learned to shoot, like, well, trap, that's, skeet, that's, that's or... That's a group of people that has access to land. That's a huge thing. Is like, you exactly. got to find somebody. For this kind of shit, you got to find somebody who can, like, have access to, like, a decent amount of land to hunt that's brushy. You can't just have 100 acres of woods that's wide open and, like, mm-hmm. you ain't got to shoot a rabbit or not. Yeah. True that. I did notice that. I even said to myself, um, it was towards the later part of the day, we walked through an area of the woods that had no brush piles, mm-hmm. and I just said to my, I think I said it to Jack, I, there's no chance we hit anything. It, it was so, so already got the feel it for was it. so open, I felt like I could see, you know, Recognizing an your habitat. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. And so you, you realize, okay, we can kind of just bust through this and yeah. we'll move to the next high percentage spot. And that gets, like, super intimidating on, like, huge scales of, like, Appalachian hunting, like white tails or like whatever it might be, Western hunting to where like you expand that on this huge thing where it's like, oh, you can write off this two Mile miles. Wide, yeah. Like yeah. here's a question for the more experienced hunters. What no. do you think was the most insightful experienced hunter moment you had today on this rabbit hunt? Good. That's a good question. Sheesh. So most I, experienced moment. I definitely okay. learned that a full choke 12 gauge will do unholy things to a rabbit at six feet. <laughs> nice. you, so what were you saying? You just shot? like what, what was the biggest thing we took away or what, what we learned today? Yeah. What did you learn today or what is something you observed today that Luke or I would not have observed not having the mm-hmm. experience you had? What? You know, did you learn anything new today? And if you, I guess that's the best question is, did you okay. learn anything I new see, today? I do have and another day, every day, What did I, you? I think for me, I would say that it, I learned, uh, we kind of talked about it a little, little bit already about how the rabbits, 
how they might be looking ahead, like seeing what you're doing and responding kind of to that or basically responding in a different way once you get close to them based on what you had done previously to getting close to them, if that makes sense. So, like, it's not just a matter of, like, oh, how did you kick that thing out of the piece of cover that it's in, but it's, like, when did it first see you? When did it first hear you? Like, how does that impact how it responds to you walking up to it? First like shotgun said, that, blast or third? Yeah, and, like, the whole uh, one that backdoored us, you know, essentially, like, that thing was kind of, like, holding tight and knew we were heading in that direction, and it was like, all right, well, I'm not going in the same direction that this thing, these predators, obviously, this a threat is coming, so I'm just going to go in the opposite direction of that, and it's like, that's something I honestly really hadn't thought that much about, about how much, like, forward thinking i guess you could call it that the uh rabbits were having so i i definitely am i'm learning every time that i've been out in the last couple of years not every single time but most of the time that i've been out it's been with someone who's a little less experienced of a hunter and i'm really learning about myself that i get more jacked up over luke killing his first rabbit than me killing one 10 seconds prior and i and i had this moment two years ago in deer season my heart was pumping harder when i was in the stand with blake when he had his first ever encounter and shot at a buck with a bow which he whiffed like eight feet over the deer's back it was beautiful (laughs) it was beautiful But my heart was pounding harder for that than it was two days prior when I arrowed the biggest buck of my life. So I'm having a lot of fun as an experienced hunter getting other people into it, helping them find the excitement that I initially found when I was a young hunter, right, in my early days. So it's it's really cool to, one, see somebody grow from having never shot a firearm to the third shell that he ever puts down range kills a rabbit. That's insane. I also that's insane, th- and it's certainly not t- t- you know yeah, tooting my I, own horn because there's a lot to be said about Luke from his mental capacity and obviously no, I, his capacity for don't aiming. Don't do me too much. The but. biggest thing I, I think, yeah, like Luke took it seriously yeah. as a thing that you're not just going out here and being like, yeah, we're going to shoot some rabbits. And like yeah, just he, being like, oh, this is some kind of game. And he wasn't like, out there to shoot. You know, at there anything. is a game no. aspect to it, but it's like he was out there like w- treating it as like I want to learn about this thing and I want to do it right. And I I know that can sound cliche or be like, well, obviously, yeah, you want to do it right. But it's like, you know, a lot of times people just really aren't There's thinking that hard about right. like. I was fully you know, like, prepared oh, not to shoot. Oh, today. you know, this is a detail that I could learn, but like, ah, it's probably not super important for the situation we're in. But like, it didn't seem like there was any of that mentality coming from Luke at all. Well, thank that you. was like, you know, oh, well, I don't need to know about that. And it's like, you yeah. you may not need to know about it, but it's like wanting to have a comprehensive knowledge is super valuable. And so like, he so he just said it. He said he was fully prepared to go out and not shoot today mm-hmm. yeah that's huge and that is that is not a mentality you're going to find in most young hunters because by the time you get your your license and your test done with your your safety cert you are itching to get something under your bead and your dad right? just runs a corn pile 360 yeah so you just throw the <laughs> corn pile outside the redneck line and um, then you throw it on youtube what? buddy you just shoot that that button buck 70 yards with a crossbow <laughs> One thing I did want to say, like, to Jack about that last question he asked was just, like, having having nice. people around who who are new to it, like, a lot of times with the questions you guys ask, it, like, really makes you think back on, like, fundamental things. It's, like, mm-hmm. refresher to where you're able to kind of, like, mm-hmm. like we talked, like we had said, continue to learn. So like, to follow up on that, what made you most nervous about hunting with new hunters? For me personally, I've had a lot of exposure to gun safety and common sense gun, you know, control. For me, it was obviously muzzle discipline, mm-hmm. not necessarily safety discipline. I think that's saying, that's yeah. He's saying he was nervous when I was carrying a weapon. <laughs> what, what made me nervous <laughs> was missing my was was missing 
<laughs> <laughs> Being the experienced hunter and absolutely whiffing on oh, a rabbit. Honestly, my, as did I. <laughs> no, my <laughs> this dude walks in and just hammers one with a turkey choke, and I'm sitting oh, here and I fire on. off two shots. I don't. What is turkey choke? You guys have said that it's, a million times. It's a very tight understand. spread. Super tight. So, so like, meaning that like you're tight. not covering yeah. a very large area with your BBs. Oh, it's only like ten yards so, away. Can, can I take you no, back? Exactly. To even more so. The, case, oh, yeah, the closer duh. it is, there's less spread. This. Even so, I'm gonna take you back to Cherry's. Business. Cherry's place. Jerry's place. When when you shot my over under, each barrel had a different like choke tube. Yards. Right. So each barrel had a different choke tube. One was a little more open, and one was a little more compressed. Okay. Yeah. And so what that does is it, it affects the, the pattern of your I shot. Understand. And so what I had so you do to, was how does what I shot two, today compare? Yeah, much one. tighter, much tighter pattern, yeah. right? So, right there, so if you shot at 15 yards with the top barrel, which I think at the time was a full choke, and then you shot at 15 yards with a turkey choke out of my shotgun, when we looked at the two different pizza boxes, you shot at the same distance. Yeah. If you drew a 10-inch circle on that, there's going to be more pellets in that 10-inch yeah, yeah, yeah. circle from the turkey choke you. than there would be from the full choke. And so... Turkey this choke, is where you take choke, the hundred, hunter dead modified, course, modified, everybody. All the way down to cylinder bore, which is just a straight Shout hole. out to Ohio DNR. Yeah. So basically it's just a pattern density thing. And with turkeys, they have very small target. And you sometimes, in my I guess, case, are shooting at 50 yards. You I, guess break I, I mean, I, I understand the concept. I guess I don't have a frame of reference of what tight is. Because yeah. when I shoot... I, I am imagining Here's that thing. I am. And it really depends on how far object. away it is. That's yeah, the yeah. biggest factor, You have really. to see your patterns. Yeah. I mean, like, I we watched the go or whatever footage yeah. we watched. I felt like I was much further away than what the footage... The footage made it seem like I was Well, Keith wasn't away. over your shoulder, though. Yeah, well, over your shoulder would be different. I mean, he, yeah. might, he might have been shooting angle. a pattern of, what, twice a paper plate or something? With what he was at at that short distance, oh, hell oh no! Twice it's a paper like plate. Oh, just that yeah, seems no, huge. Maybe a paper yeah. plate. Yeah. Like, he would have blown that thing up if it was a smaller. If it, I mean, I would say probably like this. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. considered. If he's, if he's no, panning like to the 20. side oh, on okay. a rabbit, his pattern's probably like this at 15 yards. And you're saying it was that's like 20 probably. For, he was say. only 15. So, so that's people that's are just listening. So, that's roughly yeah. that. And so we're for saying a maybe nine, ten that, inches. So yeah, for for reference, he just held up a, a water bottle that's maybe nine it, inches. Maybe the size in, of a football. Nine, water right? bottle. Right. Yeah. Basically, your your pattern was the size of that rabbit at best. Mm, at 15 yards. And you're saying that's tight. That's tight. If you were shooting like an improved or modified, you would have had like two to three times that at that distance. Size of a beach ball at that distance. What? Yeah. 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 No way, yep. really. Yep. So that's why your oh, shot was impressive. <laughs> that's, that's why that's, we're, that's why we're flipping out impressed. right now. That's why this is a big deal. That's why you huh. can miss them close, and it's weird. So we joke. Yeah, about see, I, I don't have that reference at all. But you kept asking, like, what is my range? Like, you, you were like, like, how far can I really and shoot? And that's why I was always just like, you can yards. shoot you told straight me 60 up 60 yards. yards with that. Yeah. And even on a sitting still object, 60 yards. And even with a modified, you have a chance of shooting one and killing at that, but you're only going to put one or two... BBs where you mm-hmm. want it, where yeah. with a tight choke like I that, see, you're going to put more of your them in that area. At, your pattern at 60 might be what his pattern would be at like 25. So here, here's, here's the reference for him. I shot my turkey at 50 yards, 50 paces on the nose the, the with turkey a turkey that, choke. Uh, the one at Jerry's place. Yeah, 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 okay. I only found like six pellet holes in that bird. Oh, wow. But where they landed, because shot placement is key, they were all in the neck and the throat. So I spined him. <laughs> so I, I, I spined him and flopped him. He didn't run. He didn't, you know, get off, whatever. The turkey choke put that bird down. If I had tried to shoot that mm. bird with a o- more open choke, pellets may not have even gotten to the bird. Okay. Right. Okay. So to, br- to way loop this back, I wanted to... my most nervous thing about today whoever asked that was honestly going out there and like seeing two rabbits yeah total and then you guys are just like wow this is like nothing really that special mm-hmm. like carrying yeah. what that's, yeah, that that's looking down on the experience say, like <laughs> having people be like just really turned off by just the experience or getting frustrated with it and, and you know it's like it, it feels like a lot of pressure on you as being like the experienced person to like put forth an experience that, th- that yeah. people are going to actually enjoy. 
And uh, I think maybe what Jack was kind of pointing out there is that I've, I've had some experiences with fishing yeah. where I've taken <laughs> Jack on some fishing excursions where it was a similar type of feeling but did not pan out like Dude, Luke turkey choking him, one we running. We so. him last year, man. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Jack did catch a nice hours. eight inch channel cat. <laughs> Wait, extend this. Extend this. Oh, just had a I'm lot of fishing out of experiences belief. where I try to try to provide an experience for somebody like Jack who hasn't done it a whole lot, and uh, and then we go out there and just skunk. <laughs> we <laughs> can't tell who's the better fisherman because none of us catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I remember yeah. one story of like sounds like the Scioto River catfish big trip. one being on, mm. and Jack was just like, "Hey, there's this." Oh, yeah, I saw that thing moving. I was throwing a cast net. I was throwing a cast net, and we're in, like, 60 feet of water in this reservoir. (laughs) (laughs) Throwing a cast net. There's a ton of, like, shad. I have a fish finder. I can see this whole school of shad. I'm throwing the cast net. I'm pulling up some shad, you know, using bait. And um, I, like, have my rod and a rod holder going off the side of the boat, and, like, I just hear, like, wood creaking. I kind of built these little, like, rod holder uh, mounts. And I heard like wood creaking, and I was like, "What's going on?" And I turn around and I look at my rod, like heavy action rod that is just buckled over, and it's like creaking because it's like rocking. Mind you, this is Jack's a ten foot jump. Like, oh yeah, I saw that, and I didn't know. And I was just like, <laughs> "Oh gosh!" That's, so I just dropped the cast net, the and oh, I grabbed the <laughs> rod, and of course, he got away. That seems to happen a lot. Uh, it was <laughs> definitely with Alex huge. And I. Um, and I lost cast net too because I just dropped it. <laughs> so donated a lot on that one. It was quite. Was this at Hoover? Uh, it was oh quite yeah. the experience. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, man. Oh, that's fun. incredible. That's so funny. You know, Keith, that's a good point. Like being being worried about like just the property not producing rabbits is definitely a point of a little anxiety, but. I, I guess the reason I said I was more concerned about messing is because I was not that worried about not seeing rabbits. I figured we were going to find a few. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't even really hunt at is this all the, last is year. Is this the time of year y'all typically go out? February. Yeah, we, yeah. we usually yeah. do it this time Deer of year. season usually ends the first weekend in February in Ohio. Squirrel season and goes and super... So right after that, or, we don't care about blowing out the woods with shotguns and stuff. And rabbit season goes super late and like what else are you gonna do right. in the middle of february i think that there's like, like an actual, yeah, I was saying there's well, actually a, that's a good point mean, there's actually else? a seasonal a depression specific uh, parameter is like you wake up in the morning and your head hurts terribly and that's the day you're wrapping on it's always the way it works i can't explain it <laughs> I wonder why, man. There was, there was a snapchat taken last night where i said ben what was your favorite thing about uh, rabbit season he goes well, it's not my favorite, but you just, I'm never not hungover. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, man? So, yeah, what else? What else do we want to cover that like we just, just resisted all just day? Good handwriting here on these notes. It's I do practice. So, um, at what, practice. what was the uh, the time frame that we were Cute. going out after coyotes That's tonight? That's chicken scratch, honestly. Oh, I've got snares out right now. All right, so they can Jack play the Brown, drums. A good question yeah. that we should ask Dad too, because Dad was not in here. Kicks and everything. What did you learn today? We all went around. What we learned. Yeah, I don't this know, is I, your I, property. I this is I your. Was, p- my thing was what I said earlier, like the being ready, knowing the next hole I need to run yeah. to and get but to. But like Dad's Kids been here for thirty years. Like, what's the perspective <laughs> change? <laughs> Rooks. So what Jack's question. Learn? You always got to learn every day. You or like, woods, you learn did, did anything make you nervous about taking <laughs> new hunters out? I learned that you know, I relearned that I knew everything. Anything like that. that. All knowing. I'm not sure. You were you nervous any, like, about taking new hunters out? Was learned, there anything you were apprehensive about? Did I guess so. Take about away taking new it. hunters, I mean, I, I, yeah, you want to present the safety part of it, but it was, I guess it was refreshing to see that all the ones who hunt, had hunted were conscious of that too, and I wasn't the only one, so I didn't have to be worried about oh i've got to tell these guys to wear orange and to not get down range and to stay in line because everybody else was on the same page so that that was that was an easy one but uh yeah i i, I walked out i thought i was just gonna walk out and just do yeah. the front edge and just uh just i'll, I'll go do something them. else afterwards and i'll just i'll just walk with them a little bit and then and it got fun 
<laughs> and, and then and then we started firing off two dollar shotgun shells every five minutes. And I I didn't and, and I didn't stay with it because I thought I was even going to get the gun. I just was going to walk it. And then Ben had already shot one, so he's like, "You take the gun." So I'm glad you did. I mean, That's I cool. yeah. And you guys were talking about like I think Mike was saying about the, the enjoying it with other. And I've as he was saying, I was kind of sitting there thinking that I went through that, and, and you know he's saying this and just as people about his age and stuff. I mean, I went through it with my own kids, so you, you get to that point of, you know, this is fun, and I've done it, but it gets it, it gets even more special when you do it with people and bring them into it. And I I mean, I've done that with the fishing stuff, and I've yeah. we've gone out in the boat before, and I've never even picked up a rod, and I've had as much fun yeah. as what I ever had when I had one. That's right where I was going to go. I mean, yeah. some of the best days in the boat, I get out fished three to one by the guys that are in the back of the boat. Dean and Justin will just tear them up some days, and I'll catch three fish. I don't care. I'm having a ball watching them just absolutely hammer them. Dad probably hasn't shot a rabbit off here in like. It's been. I can't remember when. Like near a decade. Yeah, one. I was going to yeah. say. It might have been I bet 10 it was years. When I was talking about those fairly morbid. <laughs> yeah, Most of the ones I remember. Actually, almost all my memories of dad shooting small game were fairly morbid. That's I nice. Mean, close That's range, nice. close and range. Or no, like no, no. he's finishing a shot that I you think like he's just didn't like pull off. Really finishing <laughs> a shot that some or stomping them. Back kids it's kind of like some. It's kind of like some memories of being in a boat with dad, where you look down at your spool and you're like, I don't even know what direction <laughs> the lines are. Like, dad, he's like, I guess I got to deal with this. <laughs> Yeah. Here was, here was we the funniest is, part thanks about for being that a good rabbit. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funniest part about that rabbit that he shot, though, was he he was a, nearly a hundred yards from us, right? He was he was off on the one point with you know, tree stumps and a couple blowdowns in it, tall grasses, overgrown. Honestly, just a raccoon honey hole. But he he's over there, and the rest of us are kind of convening. The wind is ripping, and we're yelling at each other over the wind, trying to figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to assault, you know, the the East Woods. And Keith goes, well, where's Dad? And pop. No, no. We go, well, he's over there on the point. He goes, well, why doesn't he work back towards us? Pow. I go, that's why. (laughs) It was pretty perfect. And so it was just quiet for a minute, like. Did you get him? And he goes, it was a six-yard shot or six-foot Two shot. steps or whatever it was, yeah. So dad has hunted here the, since the first time, like, 30, probably 31 years ago or something like that. 91? Yep, yep. So us, the yeah, first time you hunted here, how many? We, mo- we moved in. Actually, on the 2nd of January, we moved in. And then we went out the following weekend. I went out with three buddies, so there's four of us. We got 15. <laughs> <laughs> and we went the following weekend. There was three of us, and we got twelve. <laughs> there were so many rabbits running around. That's we had beautiful. we had a dog. We put the dog away because the dog was crossing tracks, and he'd be running one. And we'd see him jump jumping two yeah. rabbits while it was running that one, and we just said, "No, let's just let's just go out and thin some of these out by just jumping them." Thin them, yeah. So yeah. it's it's pretty wild to see how much. So like I don't I guess like how long was it? similar to that into through the 90s we had we had a lot of and and if you think about what the crp is now it it was a lot of i guess what i would picture this (laughs) next year because it was it had been farmed and it was like a couple years out of being farmed and it was just a lot of grasses out there and a little bit of edge cover type stuff and the rabbits were there like crazy so um I would I would picture it like probably what this is going to look like in next year as far as the CRP. Yeah. It's a golden rod. Yeah. It's just early, early mm-hmm. like two to five year early success. Which I feel like eventually we're going to try to want to try to keep like this entire front woods region as kind of like keep it back to what it was in Knox County early nineties like that just as much, I mean, as much early early, early succession. Yeah. Still yeah. Transition. Yeah. Yeah. But there's manageable stuff that pretty much right now is just dead, dead ash, rose stuff. Yeah. But Basically, where we're sitting at is we walk the neighbor's property, property, we go over there, get to the edge, you look over there, and you're like, wow, that's like what happens Freaky. if we don't do anything. It's a stark contrast. And for it's literally just like 20 foot rivet 
Yeah, that's what I said. Like, I looked oh at it and God. I said, I thought we had a honeysuckle and privet problem. And it's like, and you it's can't, like, oh like, my gosh. To me, it's like burning is out of the question. Yeah, yeah. it's it's forestry mulcher at that point. It seriously yeah. is. I feel like the, yeah, I mean, the you could spray, you could do like the chemical treatment stuff, but you almost just have to like complete hard reset on a lot of that stuff. It's just like. It's, Whereas, all, it's almost too so big to treat. To try you got to reset yeah. it and as much treat as we it small. Can and then keep it to the point where we can we can do those, you know, mm-hmm. very spot treatment methods. And I wanted to like I feel like we bring that back to like how we've been seeing the rabbit population change and like fluctuate relative to the habitat changes surrounding us. But it, and it's also all coming at the point where like surrounding properties are within the past decade getting like freaky with you know honeysuckle and i know the stuff to the north is crazy honeysuckle we got crazy privet to the south yeah just the way the forests have yeah yeah Yeah. and ours as well years ago is a lot of the pasture Mm -hmm. and i I think the rabbits can still flourish and all that thick stuff but a lot of the other animals the deer don't like all the honeysuckle and the privet as much i don't think yeah with with the hot they exist the mid-story honeysuckle privet type stuff it's like that there's really nowhere for a rabbit to even Hide. reside in that. Really, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's brushy to us, but that's because you know it's all, we're it's four to five feet off the ground. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you're, you're, you're just ground. this little thing that's you know ten inches tall or whatever, and it's like, I, man, you're you're not hiding in honeysuckle. I guess I'm I'm not saying it's the optimal cover for them, but it's it's not. Preventing them. We from there existed. I mean, we saw that. We did. At, we saw a lot of tracks. There were some, well, there were a bunch of squirrel tracks too. The spot where we normally yeah, used there, to there were see rabbit tracks. Where we normally there. used to Lots see a of lot of them. Tracks. Just you know, at uh, just past the prairie area, we get down into that drainage in the opposite hillside. Yeah, that's we normally a see a that's lot. Weird. We normally will I've, always kick one up there, and now it's, it's like this year. It seemed like I really noticed, Same. and we didn't do it last year. So that's you know, it's actually been two years. But, like, that hillside, it was like, man, that, this used to just be, like, serious producer. Like, guaranteed you're going to push one out of yeah. there. Now it's like, well, what the heck? Like, where's all the rabbits? The, se- the, you know, the it's, honeysuckle it, is you know, mature. There's, the stuff isn't, the brush, the cover's not on the ground anymore. It the, gets honeysuckle, above two feet. the honeysuckle is matured to the point where it's just, like, created enough canopy yes. to where it's just, like, there's nothing under it now anymore. And like, but, yeah, that's what so I was going to say. It's not so much that... That the honeysuckle wasn't there. It's just you compare that to the rest of it. There was nothing for them to browse on. It's I mean, some, it was desolate oh, yeah. except for the honeysuckle. That was just, just you know. Which which is weird because you do see it. They do eat the honeysuckle bark, but it's just like also there's a lot of it. So like in a lot of areas, it's like, well, what else are they gonna eat? Like yeah, in those areas. it's kind of like rabbits saying, eat the bark. They'll strip yeah. the bark off the base of those. Yeah, it's kind of like saying like, oh well, you know, you can say that the rabbits don't like the multifloral rose, but I just kick two of them up out of multifloral rose. And they and do it's eat like, that well, too, yeah. but what percentage of the area was multifloral rose? Yeah. Like it's gonna like 143 there's, yeah, there's only so many places for a rabbit to get to yeah. choose to be, and it's like maybe that's not what they really want or do that well in, but it's what is everywhere. Yeah, so. especially when the snow is on that like woody woody stuff they strip that <laughs> bark more when there's snow because none of that green stuff is available but right now like that green stuff since that snow melted all that clover out there like so today munching on. i only recall kicking one rabbit in the multiflora and that was a rabbit that was not originally in the multiflora it was in that great big silver maple blowdown we just kept pushing yeah. it through the multiflora, and it just happened to be stuck there, trying to avoid the wall of orange that was walking at it. Yeah. <laughs> so, wall so, and and I want to I want to run right back uh, to something Keith said, where the he's talking about the honeysuckle creating enough of a canopy. You're you're not talking about an eighty foot tall oak tree hickory walnut canopy. This is a a understory midstory canopy where this invasive species this honeysuckle is the first thing to develop leaves it's the one of the first species that greens up in the spring so believe it or not there's actually a a window in uh, it's usually i think it's usually in like late march early april mid april April, it it fluctuates every year where you're at but it's the only thing that's green and it makes it insanely easy to go treat it with a foliar spray because you don't have to worry about overspraying and hitting anything else but when it's the first thing, when this species is the first thing that, that leafs out in the spring, 
what it does is those leaves develop and then prevent the sunlight from getting to the forest floor to put the warmth into the soil that the native shrubs, the native trees, all of those native grasses, they need that warmth in the soil to germinate and actually bloom or come up, come up and, and, and grow. So if the honeysuckle is just preventing any sunlight from getting to your forest floor, and this is, this is an effect you can get with mature timber trees too. If your camp is so developed that you're not getting any sunlight to the forest floor, you're never going to have that successional forest to come back if you were to do a timber harvest on those larger trees. So th th this circles back into the, the management aspect of paying attention to your property and what it needs each year because these, these changes can't be made on a decade-by-decade -decade basis. They need to be made every season. Otherwise, it's going to get out of control real fast. Like you see, the second we got off of our property and we're hunting the neighbors, which we had permission on, just want to throw that in there. This is just such a stark contrast between a managed property and a non-managed property. And it was a noticeable difference. I don't think we jumped a single rabbit over across your property line, did we? When, when we crossed over, off of your property uh, I mean, into... Technically, it wasn't ours. It was we like chased right one off, off of your ours, property yeah. into the other. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. It's. I think, yeah, that's like invasives and just forest. It's a small sample size. Succession, but, too. Yeah. Composition, too. Yeah, yeah I, I, I briefly touched on forest yeah. succession, but something tells me that the forester is probably a little more qualified to touch on that subject than I am. Yeah, that well, one goes very deep. That's a whole other. Yeah. We'll, we'll be back for Check it. Check out the Native we'll Landscape know. podcast for some yeah. of that stuff. We need to talk about and don't forget that's the, whole the thing hunting with the yard and all that. <laughs> that's the earliest succession we've got is the yard. I mean, that's basically what the place was when you bought it, right? Yeah. What the yard looks like now. Yeah. Two-year-old two stand of goldenrod, forbs, grasses. Oh, We have any last thoughts on this? I feel like I mean. We had nine, we had ninety minutes. I don't know. I had a blast. I'm I'm glad yeah. you guys came out. Hunting's Jack fun and, and it's hard. Me. It requires a lot yeah, of patience. Yeah, it ain't easy, man. Mm -hmm. Wait till Certainly you get not. Hunting yeah. Just, uh, I was looking forward to you guys coming. Like it's specific. pretty cool that you came. Was, I had a lot that of was fun. A, I I'd been asking Al for months years now. <laughs> yeah, honestly, years. When when we when I lived with him, I I had asked him constantly, but. Yeah, well, you know, good, that's pretty good cool. Good I made the most through and like doing the the license and everything. That's that's a huge yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Al sent it to me. I was like, all right, if I'm if I'm doing it, I'm doing it right. Yeah. So and cool. I think I think that's why I was so. I I mean, I have to be honest. If you asked me last week how ready I was to skin an animal and rip its guts out, not very. But in the moment, I knew I had to do it, and it, it was worthwhile. Now so. you're looking for knives online, right? Yeah. <laughs> A good away. knife, a good knife goes a long way. I did also learn that this weekend. Yeah. And Jack's uh, still looking for cars. <laughs> <laughs> Jack is looking for cars. I can't fit my four by twelve in my coupe. It's a real problem. <laughs> Let me see other other closing thoughts I had. Uh, I was glad I got to try something new. I appreciate how to actually acquire food rather than just buy it. Um, hunting's hard. The twenty gauge is easy to shoot. I'd shoot a bow. Be safe with your firearms. Uh, oh, ooh, well, it's a workout. And then the one I just exclamated about is um, it's hard to see when you're out it there. Just put the snow on. Dude. Yeah, snow it's hard to see, man. Yeah, I guess that's that, snow that's an interesting. Perspective. Everything yeah. blends. The snow is so nice, dude. The contrast. Yeah, Alex did tell me that. He said with the white backdrop, it might oh. be a bit easier. And I think I'll that tell comes you, even with the white backdrop, my eye is not trained enough to pick yeah, out yeah, movement. But you, you'll there learn it because no you'll start you'll, you'll start you'll start tough. pulling up on birds and that and squirrels. I feel like it's it's also a, up on moving I almost things, bopped that's a squirrel. That's good. It's like, that's what you want is that instinct. Just like you see a movement, you're like, and I don't shoot right away, but I'm just like, mm. right, it's an experience in. thing too. Like the more you do it, the more you know what to look for. You know, you, yeah. like which shapes you're looking for, where you're looking. Yes. Like where to look? Like where is the going to be the highest percentage spot to where I should be looking first? What should I be looking for? That kind of stuff. And then the more you do it, the more mm -hmm. instinctual when you, it comes. When, when I noticed when you have like something, you know, right now I'm looking at a piano in front of me, and it's it's all dark wood, 
and I see uh, one red candle in front of me, and the red is contrasted. It's easy to pick out. Even if I swing my head by, I know the red candle's there. But when you're in the woods, you scan, and everything, it looks so similar, your eyes don't mm-hmm. focus. That's where the it's, animals it's excel. It's funny yeah. how they end up being. It kind of just, that you don't, you're not even mm-hmm. looking at, I don't know, you, you, it you're doesn't feel like I'm actually looking. I don't know, that sounds so weird, but. Yeah, it just turns into straight instinct. That's that was some, experience. It's yeah, just, that was something I like really a, noticed. Yeah. I felt like I was, I was, I was not able to. You focus don't want to f- yeah, yeah. focus and refocus that, like, because you're looking at some of the stuff you're looking at is really close. Some of the stuff's yeah. really far away. A lot of the colors blend together a lot, and that's that's not by chance. That is by nature's design, if you will. That's yeah. evolution. I mean, mm-hmm. those those things that develop to not yeah. be seen. I can see why pe- hunters wear camo. That's for sure. Kind of the same color. As the things that they like to sit in. It's almost like, like they <laughs> it works that way. that way. But yeah. Those are my closing thoughts. Yeah. I mean, that's I feel like we're probably gonna close it up there if no one else has anything to say. Your mic's actually completely dead. Mike. <laughs> what about now? Oh, thank you too. Oh. A good thanks. Yeah, thank you, thank thank you, you guys. Yeah, I don't this is a lot. Of, this is a fun little podcast. Good, I'm glad we got our little great discussion. Yeah, finally got our discussion in. We didn't talk about the food at all, did we? The food oh, was incredible. Shit. Briefly, I mean, yeah. it was insane. It'll be Extremely in the video. Edible. Briefly, I cooked the whole <laughs> thing myself. It was large delicious. amount of edibility. <laughs> It'll be some of that will be in the video. I would say at least some some of the cooking experience, okay. but. Yeah, check that out. I don't know what, what time frame Maybe, this will even be. But make sure we uh, throw the aerial shot from the scaffolding of the uh, rabbit cleaning operation. That'll make sure that makes it, it into the... Into oh, you made your way up awesome. the scaffolding? That's, <laughs> that's did, moral yeah. of the story for me on the on the food is pressure cooking is incredible. for yeah. like Particularly for wild game, if, if, if you don't want the, the a lot of the... Tough rabbitiness. Tough, yeah, yeah, it's, you know... Pressure cooker did really good. It was like, yeah, I mean, I mean, what was the total amount of shot found? Like three. I bit one. One. A lot of bone. Everybody else, I found didn't four find four maybe, and then in I didn't. Yeah, I didn't three. find any when I was eating. So, so. that yeah. w- whatever you did, the in, the instant pot, you shredded it right off the bone. I'm sure that probably mitigated the. Uh, the shot circumstances, but now it was a little bit more time consuming the way that we did it because we them. put whole carcasses, um, you know, like we didn't quarter it out or anything. We had ribs, uh, quarters and everything, full like body, a, a yeah. full body in the instant pot, which, you know, required a little bit more work pulling all the bones out of there and everything. Mm-hmm. You got your spine, you got ribs and everything. But, uh, it, we, I think we got definitely all more yield from doing yeah. that. I mean, all the meat that was on that thing ended up being in the pot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll probably close it before. Well, I mean, we'll just keep rambling. That was pretty <laughs> cool. Thank you guys, and thank the people on potentially on the other side of this that are listening to this. <laughs> thank you for making it this long. Thank Appreciate you. it. See ya. <laughs>